Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a web crawler using Node.js in a library called Cheerio.js that kind of pars the HTML. So let's first talk about what a web crawler is, and I'll give you a really quick overview. As an example, let's just use this URL as an example. What a web crawler does is it basically finds a site, and it finds every clickable link that you can navigate to on that site. So for example, on the Steve's Cooking Blog site, if I were to click on, let's say, archive down here and click on one of these links, notice that we navigate to a new page. That is what a web crawler does behind the scenes. It finds every link, clicks on them, and then for the new page that loads, it does the same logic. It keeps finding links and clicking on them until you've kind of exhausted the entire site. So there's a little bit of caching that goes on to make sure you don't revisit URLs that you've seen in the past. But that is the gist of it. And that's what we're going to be trying to build a really basic one using, again, Node.js and a couple of libraries. All right, so that was what a web crawler is. Let's talk about demoing what this web crawler is going to do. So if I were to run this script, it's going to crawl that site that I just showed you, that cooking, Steve's cooking blogspot.com site. And this is just some arbitrary blog I found that had some images that are kind of high resolution. And for every link that it finds, you'll see here it's crawling these different links. It's going to try to download the image and put it in this images folder. So after running this crawler, you'll notice that we have a ton of different images here. Some of them are high resolution, JPEGs, um, PNGs, etc. And that is the gist of what we're gonna be building. So if that's something that is interesting to you, be sure to stick around and watch through this whole video. Okay, so now that we've seen a demo of what we're trying to build, let's just go ahead and start building it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up an initial NPM project. So I'm gonna say NPM init dash Y. And that'll set up a package.json, which will allow us to download different dependencies. So in this case, there are a couple of libraries that we need to use to be able to easily build this web crawler. The first one is one called Cheerio. I will install Cheerio. Secondly, we need a library for fetching data from remote URLs. You could use Axios, but in this tutorial, I want to use something called NodeFetch. Thirdly, I'm actually going to be writing the script in TypeScript just to get a couple of extra benefits for code auto completion. So I'm going to go ahead and do TypeScript and then also TS hyphen node. So if you're new to TypeScript and you're kind of concerned that you don't know much about TypeScript, don't worry. I'm just going to be using the bare minimum just so I have a little bit of extra help along the way. Okay, so now that our project is set up, if we look at this package.json file, we see that we have our dependencies. And technically these could probably be dev dependencies, but it's no big deal. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace this test script with a start script. And I'm going to basically use the TS node library or plugin that we downloaded down here to run our TypeScript file. So I'm going to make a file or pretend that we have a file created in source slash index.ts. And what this script will allow us to do is basically run npm start in our terminal down here and have it run our TypeScript file. So at this point, I'm going to make a new a directory called source. And I'm going to make a file called index.ts inside of that source folder. So if you notice here, I can go and we have a TypeScript file. And just to verify that all this is working, I'm just going to go ahead and print out hello world and run my npm start script. And notice that when it finishes running, it prints out hello world. Now to get the full benefit of TypeScript, I do believe you need to have a TypeScript extension installed. I don't really know off the top of my hand what extension I have, but I'm sure if you just type TypeScript, you'll find something. Or it might be built into VS Code by default. I don't really know. So good luck on that. All right, so let's go back to the readme and figure out what we're doing. So we are kind of did an initial setup. So let's just go ahead and move on. The first step we want to do is this web crawler needs to fetch HTML from some website. So just to kind of get started with some type of initial functionality, let's just go ahead and require or import our node fetch library and try to fetch a URL. So at the top, let's remove the console log and instead say import star as fetch from and then using quotes we could say node fetch and that'll pull in our dependency that we installed in our package json here node fetch and that'll grant us access for running the different um, commands that node fetch will provide us so at this point we can actually try to fetch some data from a remote url and we could say fetch we could pass it a url here so the url that i'm going to pass for right now is actually going to not be this blog post but instead, I have an HTML folder here with some basic HTML that we're going to host. So I'm going to say mpx HTTP server port 10,000, and I'm going to host that folder. 
And this is just so that we have a smaller site, kind of an, a self-contained isolated site to play around with. So let me just show you that real quick. So you notice here, let me, let me zoom in. We have that folder that has a home page, and if you click on the different links, it'll take you to different links like other HTML or home will take you back to contact. There's really nothing on these pages. It's just something that we can start small with to try to test out our web crawler before we move on to something larger because you're going to run into small edge cases that are going to break your crawler if you don't have the code in place to catch those exceptions and stuff like that. So again, let's try to fetch this document and print it out to the console using our node fetch library. So here I'm going to paste that in. Just do a fetch request to that localhost 10,000 slash index URL. And what we can do is since fetch returns a promise, we can tack on a dot then, and we can say response.text, which is going to return a promise again. So we could tack on yet another then. And this will basically give us access to the HTML that the page has. So I'm just going to print this out real quick just to kind of demo this. So let me run that start command, and we should see a bunch of HTML print out. And lucky for us, it does. It prints out down here, and this is the same HTML that you might see if you were to go to the index and do an inspect element. You notice that we have the same body with three links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so at this point, we kind of know how to fetch URLs and get the HTML and save them somewhere. But what I would like to do is actually use async await instead of these promise chainings because async await is a little bit cleaner in my opinion. So I'm going to make a function called crawl, which is going to take in a argument that has an object property called URL. And what this crawl function is going to do is basically run this same code, but instead I can make this an async function and I could do an await on it. So I could say const response is equal to await a fetch. And then I could say const of HTML is equal to response.text. Make sure we await on that as well. And then finally, we could just console log uh, HTML here. So this will be the exact same code. We just need to make sure we crawl it with an actual URL here. So I'm going to say URL. I'm going to abstract this out. Or I should say extract it out. And then instead of fetching that hard-coded URL, we'll just fetch whatever was passed in. So this will make our code a little bit more um, abstracted and reusable. So let's just run it one more time to make sure that we get the same output. And we do, so I think we're gonna we're in a good spot. So that was if we go back to the README, that was the first part of this little um, step that we have listed out. The next step that we want to do is how do we actually search that HTML for different links? So let me do a real quick recap again about what we're trying to build and how a web crawler works. So it's first going to load this HTML, and then for every link it sees, we need to again kind of navigate to that new link and grab the HTML from that. Okay, so the first step, or the next step that we're trying to do is, how do we get all the links from the HTML we just got back? So let's import that second library. Remember there's another library I installed called Cheerio, and if I go to the npm docs for this, it is basically a way to just parse HTML and be able to do simple queries against that HTML. So let's just go ahead and copy this little example snippet here, and we're going to be using that in a second. So I'm going to import it first. So import star as a Cheerio from Cheerio. And now that we have access to it, we can actually use that Cheerio library to kind of create a object that has a bunch of functions that you can use to parse the HTML that we got back. So instead of doing a Cheerio.load on this hard-coded string that was in the example text, what we could do is pass in our HTML here. So now in this case, we need to try to query for all of the links, okay? So one thing you can do with Cheerio is you could basically just provide it a string, very similar to jQuery or whatever. Um, you could do like document.querySelectorAll or something. If you're familiar with this, you could you know provide it a class name or provide it a link or something like that. But Cheerio, the way it works is you pass it the tag that you want to grab. So I'm going to say A, and that should give us all three of the hyperlink tags here. So one function that the Cheerio collection allows you to do is you can do dot map, very similar to a JavaScript map function, where basically it loops over every element in the collection and you can do some type of operation on it and have that returned as a new array. So in this case, the map function is going to take an i, it's kind of reversed for whatever reason, this library reversed i. And then secondly, the second argument is the actual Cheerio 
uh, the tag that you're looking at. You know, for example, the first would be uh, index zero, and then the second argument would be this actual object here. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to map over all the Cheerio links, and I can instead say link dot attribs dot href, and this will basically give us a, in a collection of three different hrefs. So in this case, we'll have like about HTML, a TOS HTML, and then this absolute link to contact HTML. And the last step is you want to do a dot get on this collection to kind of convert it to a normal JavaScript array. So in this case, I could say links is equal to this. And just to kind of demonstrate, I'm going to console log this out. So let's just print out links here. And I'm going to go ahead and run the start command. And we should see three links print out. So at this point, we learned how to search through HTML and parse through HTML to find various elements. In this case, we're just looking for A tags. And the next part is we want to kind of recursively keep on crawling to get all the links that are on the web page. So in order to achieve this, you kind of need to know a little bit about computer science or depth first search. Um, we are going to be using depth first search, but technically you could use something like breadth first search, which might be a little bit more performant because websites are pretty big. And if you recursively traverse all the links over and over again, you might run out of stack. But since it's just a simple tutorial, let's just use depth first search. So if you imagine when you go to the index, you want to click on a link and download the new page. And then again, for every link that you see, you want to click on the link and download the entire page. So let's just naively recall the same function that we just did. So I'm going to say crawl. And I'm going to pass it a URL. But in this case, the URL is actually going to be dependent on what links that we saw. Okay, so in this case, for every link that we found, we need to kind of call a new URL, which will kind of match some type of structure of this. So this is an example. <clears throat> So this is where it gets kind of confusing because on a web page, you can have absolute links, you can have relative links, and you can also have like links that start with a, a leading slash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function, kind of like a helper function, that we can pass in a link and get the full URL back. So I'm going to say const get URL, and I'm going to pass it in a link. And I want it to return me a kind of a full URL based on what's passed in. So in this case, if the link that comes in doesn't have an HTTP in it, then I'm going to basically just return. I want to return basically the the URL appended with that new link. So in this case, I could do something like this. Now this is very rudimentary and naive, but um, there's probably a lot more edge cases that you need to cover. <clears throat> but we're going to come back and kind of fix this up in a second so it works for every URL that we provide. So the other case is maybe we have an absolute link. Well, what we want to return is just that link. So I think this should work if link.index of HTTP is not equal to negative one, which means it exists. I think you can also use like includes, or I think it's includes. So I think there is a strings includes, which might be easier and cleaner to understand. So let's use that instead. And what we want to do is we want to loop over every link. So I could say, I don't know, links dot for each. And then for every link that we have, I am going to basically call the crawl method again. So I'm going to say crawl URL, get URL, pass it the link. All right. So just so we know what's going on, I am actually going to just put a little console log here and say crawling. URL. <clears throat> so before I run this, you could probably think, well, if you run this, this is going to recursively run over and over and over again and keep on hitting every link. And if we didn't make any mistakes coding this up, that is exactly what should happen. So it should just recursively probably run out of stack space, stack space at some point. Let's see. So this is actually saying only absolute URLs are supported. So I think what's going on is we are probably yeah, so I have this swapped, so that's my bad. If it includes HTTP, then we just want to return the link. Otherwise, we want to return this. So I'm sorry for that, I messed that up, but 
that should fix this. And now you'll notice that it keeps on crawling the same URLs over and over and over again until this application probably runs out of stack. So what we want to do instead is keep track of the links that we've seen. So I'm going to go ahead and create an array up here, the const scene. <clears throat> In fact, it's going to be an object, not an array. And I'll call it scene URLs, I guess. And for every time that you crawl a URL, we're going to say scene URLs of URL is equal to true. And before we actually crawl that URL, we want to make sure that we haven't seen it yet. So if we have not seen the URL yet, then um, we want to do all this logic. So let me actually do a different way. If we have seen it, then we want to return. And then we just move on and keep track of that URL. All right, so now what I could do is rerun that. And notice that it only crawls a small subset of all the links. We see index, we see about, TOS, contact other, and we also see a slash slash. So this was another edge case that is kind of set up. It's a link that just goes to the root of the page. And so what we actually need to do is add another check here and say else if link dot starts with slash. I think starts with is something you can use. We'll find out in a second, right? We want to basically return I'm just going to hard code this for now, but we can come back and fix this so it'll work with every type of website. We want to basically do this without that slash here. So if I were to rerun this, hopefully we get a... Okay, so the last one it crawls does not have that double slash, so I think that fixes that little issue for now. So hopefully I haven't lost you or confused you too much at this point in this video. Kind of going pretty quick. But the next step let's check out is we want to be able to ignore scene links. Oh, we actually just did that. so kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, so let's actually move downloading images up here. That's what we could do next. And then these, these are kind of like little tweaks that make the crawler more re resilient to not going out of the page that we're trying to look at. Um, yeah, so let's work on downloading images. So if we go back to this index.ts file, what we want to do is for every page that we hit, so inside the crawl function, every time we hit a page and we've downloaded the HTML, we want to extract all of the image tags. Okay, so if we think back, how do we get all the A tags? Well, we just did something like this. So if you want to get all the images, you could do something similar and just use Cheerio to search for all the image tags. And we're going to do a similar um, type of logic to just grab all of the source attributes. And we'll just go ahead and console log those images. Nothing else really changes. We still need to kind of recursively traverse the web page and find every link and keep navigating. But what actually changes is now that we have pages that might have images, we're going to print them out. So in this case, we did find an image. We found a dog image, which existed on the contact page, I believe. So if I go here, this is actually on the about page. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to download every image that we saw and save it to a folder called images. So in Node, if you want to write to your disk, you're going to have to use the FS library, which is built into Node, or you could probably find a third party library to do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and import star as FS from FS. And that'll allow us to write images to the disk. Okay, so what we need to do is I'm going to change this to images or image URLs. And we can loop through every image URL and try to fetch the image from the server. So I'm going to say image URLs dot for each. And I'll have image URLs a parameter. And I'm going to go ahead and call using that image URL. I'm going to say fetch. And I'm going to, instead of passing just the image URL, because note that the URLs could not be absolute, node fetch will fail unless you give it an absolute URL. So I'm going to use that helper function we created up here called get URL. And I'm going to pass it image URL right here. So after calling that, you can get the response um, object, which will allow you to do some different stuff with what comes back from the back end. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to write the data that we got back to a file. So using the node FS library, we can actually create a write stream. So const des is equal to fs.createWriteStream. And we can write something to a path. So I'm going to say images slash uh, my image.jpg for now. <laughs> Just going to hard code it, but we can fix it in a bit. 
And what we could do now is we can say response.body.pipe and give it dest. So now every image that we found is going to be written overwritten to that my image file. So let's go ahead and try running that and see what happens. Okay, so no errors, everything ran. We go here, we see that we have a picture of that dog image. Okay, so everything is working fine, but there are some cleanup things that we need to do. Like every image doesn't have a hard-coded name of myimage.jpg. So the first thing I want to do to kind of clean this up is I don't want to just hard-code myimage.jpg. I actually want to do the name of the image that we found and write that to the disk. All right, so one way you can get the base name of a file is you can actually import another node, a library called path. So I'm going to say import star as path from path. And down here we can say um, const file name is equal to path dot base name and we can pass it the image URL. So I'm going to say image URL and that should hopefully give us back dog.jpg instead of whatever we hard coded here. And we could just interpolate that out. I'm going to change these double quotes to single quotes. And I'll go ahead and clear out that images folder and rerun this script. So notice here we have dog.jpg.jpg and that is because I accidentally appended jpeg to it. So let me rerun it one more time just to make sure we get dog.jpg instead. And we do. All right, so the next step or the very last step, this one is actually not even important because we already kind of handled it. But the last step that we want to cover, and I put a little, little snippet right here just so we keep track of it, is we want to make sure that the web crawler stays on the same page. So the current issue that we are running into right now is if I were to run this crawler over this URL, stevescooking.blogspot.com, it's actually going to start hitting external links and go out of this host that we originally wanted to stay on. So in order to stay on this page, what we could do is just kind of add a filter for new links that we find and make sure that they also include the string of this.com. So luckily in Node, there is a library that you can bring in, or I guess you, I should say a module called URL. So I'm going to say bring in import star as URL parser from URL. And I can use this to kind of pick apart the original URL and figure out what this host is. So I think a good place to put this filter in is right before we try to crawl the links. So I'm going to go ahead and say const host is equal to URL parser .parse, And I'm going to parse that initial URL that was brought in as an argument to this function. And what we could do is using an ES6 filter, I don't know if the ES6, but using an array filter function, we could just filter out the links that only include this host. So I say link dot contains, actually, I'm sorry, includes host. I always get includes and contains mixed up, once for arrays, once for strings. So now if I were to run this, we should only view and crawl links that have the exact same host as Steve's cooking.blogspot.com. And as this is running, notice that it does finish at some point. And if we go into the images folder, we'll see that we have a ton of images here that we can use at our disposal. All right, so that wraps up this web crawling tutorial in Node.js. If you, if you wanted to kind of modify this to do your own thing, obviously what you do is instead of image URLs, if you want to like pick it apart and try to grab other elements, instead of grabbing images, you want to grab something else and do whatever you want with it. So again, thank you so much for watching. This was a Web Dev Junkie tutorial video. My name is Cody Seibert. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to leave a comment below and give me a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and press that bell icon because there's going to be a lot of tutorial videos like this in the future. All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.